Welcome back to Tech Mimic, where you can simply view, imitate, replicate, and get on with your day. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of installing FreeBSD from start to finish, step by step, including some additional information along the way. Because you found this video, I'm sure you know that FreeBSD is a powerful and flexible operating system that's great for service, but also for daily use desktop computing. And now it is the time that you want to give it a try. There is an earlier video for FreeBSD 14.1 on the channel, and the steps are very similar. However, several comments led me to believe that it made sense to produce an updated video for version 14.2 that got released the 3rd of December 2024. I am not going to compare any changes between the versions of the installation process, because I assume that if you would like to install 14.2 from scratch, you are no longer interested in 14.1. However, if you are, or if you would like to see a video on how to upgrade in place from 14.1 to 14.2, both are linked in the description for your convenience. First, we need to download the FreeBSD installation image. Head over to the official FreeBSD website at freebsd.org. Click on the button Download FreeBSD and select the appropriate version for your hardware architecture. As stated on the website, for most users on modern Intel-based PCs, this will be AMD64. AMD64 might sound somewhat confusing, but this is what you would use for Intel as well. Under the most recent release, in this case FreeBSD 14.2, select AMD64. From the list, select the disk1.iso file to download it. If you want to create a bootable USB stick, follow this step. If you are mounting the ISO you have just downloaded to run FreeBSD as a virtual machine, you can skip this step. Once you have downloaded the image, it's time to create the installation media. Connect your USB stick to your machine. If you are using Windows, you can use a tool like Rufus or Balina Etcher. And on Linux or macOS, you can use the DD command from a terminal. Here I am using Linux Mint. And there the bundled utility is simply called USB Image Writer. Pretty much every Linux distribution includes a USB Image Writer by default. But creating the actual bootable USB stick is not the purpose of this video. There are loads of tutorials already out there on YouTube. Please make sure to select the correct drive to avoid data loss. Once you have your USB drive ready, you are all set to boot from it. Now insert your USB drive into your target machine and reboot. You might need to enter your BIOS or UEFI settings to change the boot order. Look for a prompt during startup that tells you how to enter the setup. Usually it's a key like F2, delete or escape. Once there, set your USB drive as the first boot device, save the changes and exit. If you are using the virtual machine method, make sure that the virtual machine is booting from the ISO image. After booting from the USB drive, you will see the FreeBSD boot menu. Select option 1, the boot installer, by waiting for the timeout or by pressing enter. This will launch the FreeBSD installer and you will be greeted with a welcome screen. You can navigate through this and the following menus by using the tab key to move between fields, the spacebar key to select or deselect options and the enter key to confirm any choices. If you decide not to install FreeBSD straight away, but instead you want to play around with it a little bit first, select Live System. In this case we want to install it, so we select Install. Press Enter to continue. The first configuration step is choosing your keyboard layout. The default is usually fine for English users, but you can select your keyboard layout if you need something different. You can even select the option Test Default Key Map to make sure it is all working as expected. Once you are satisfied, make sure the top option Continue With is selected and hit Enter. Specify the hostname for this machine and hit Enter.
Here you can select or deselect the various optional system components to install. This will depend on your intended use of FreeBSD. A quick rundown, base DBG. The base tools with debug symbols activated. Kernel DBG. The kernel and modules with debug symbols activated. Lib32 DBG. These are the compatibility libraries for running 32-bit applications on a 64-bit version of FreeBSD with the debug symbols activated. Lib32, the compatibility libraries for running 32-bit applications on a 64-bit version of FreeBSD. And ports is the FreeBSD ports collection, which is used for third-party software packages. This will require about 3 gigabytes of space to install. SRC is the complete FreeBSD source code for both the kernel and the so-called user land. Tests, this is the FreeBSD test suite. You can leave the default selection, or even when you deselect everything on this list, it will always install a so-called base system for you. Make your selection, and once satisfied, hit enter to proceed. Next, we need to set up disk partitions. Here the power of FreeBSD will become visible, but all this flexibility might be overwhelming at first. The installer will give you a few options. To keep things simple, for now, I recommend using the first option, Guided Root on ZFS, which simplifies the process. Hit enter. The installer will now scan your hard disks. In the next screen, named ZFS Configuration, you have many advanced options. You can encrypt your disk or alter the partition scheme and many more things. In this case, I am not changing anything and I will just go for the top option. Proceed with installation. In the next screen, we can now configure striping or mirroring of the disks. Every option is explained briefly at the bottom of the screen. Once again, to keep it simple, I'm going to select the top option to have no redundancy. I only have one hard disk anyway. Finally, we have to select the actual hard disk that we want to install FreeBSD onto. Select it with the spacebar and hit enter. Now a warning dialog appears that everything on the hard disk selected is going to be destroyed. Be careful here and double check. In this case, we are happy to continue and we select yes with the arrow keys and hit enter. Now the installer will begin copying the base system files and everything else that you have selected in step 7, distribution select, to your hard drive. This process might take a few minutes, so go get some coffee. Once the files are copied, you will be prompted to continue the configuration. Specify the root password twice. By the way, any of the configuration options you can review and change at the end of the install process. There is no need to start again if you have made a mistake. Select your network card and hit enter. You are now asked to configure TCPIP version 4. Select yes or no if you want to go straight to TCPIP version 6. If you are using DHCP, select yes again and it will automatically configure your network settings for you. If you need a static IP address, select no instead and you can then enter the details manually. In my case, I'm going to use TCPIP version 4 via DHCP and possibly that is what most users will select. After it acquired an IP address, it asks me if I would like TCPIP version 6 as well. In my case, I select no. The final network configuration screen shows the name resolution configuration it has discovered. Now hit enter. If you are in the UTC time zone, just hit enter. If you are not, you will have to select no. Select your region with the arrow keys or the number and hit enter. Do the same to select your country and hit enter. The confirmation dialog is asking if the time zone, in my case CET, look reasonable. I do find that very reasonable indeed, and I hit enter. In the next two dialogs, confirm or adjust the time and date if needed. It is correct in my case, so I can skip on both occasions. Study the options and adjust accordingly. I want to use the network time protocol to synchronize my local system time automatically, so I select it and hit enter to continue.
This will be for advanced users, but once again, the power of FreeBSD is apparent. I will leave all of the defaults and hit enter. Since FreeBSD 14.2, the installer now supports downloading and installing necessary firmware packages after installing the FreeBSD base system. Now hit enter. Again, useful for advanced users, but this improvement streamlines the setup process, reducing the need for manual firmware installation post-installation. It is good practice to use a regular user account for normal day-to-day -day usage of your system instead of the root account. So yes, I would like to add a user to the installed system now. The default appears to work well for me, so I can hit enter a lot to accept the defaults that are listed in parentheses. If you would like to allow your user to execute administrative commands, such as using su and sudo later on, you can already add your user account to the wheel group at this point. A link how to configure sudo is in the description for your convenience. You can optionally encrypt your home directory as well, in case you want only that to be encrypted and not encryption of the entire hard disk. I don't want an empty password, and I want to specify it myself. The user should not be locked out. That summary looks about right, so yes, and no, I don't need another user. You can now review any of the selections you have made and adjust when needed. What I like to do is to install the FreeBSD handbook, so I have something locally if I ever run into problems. Of course, this is fully optional. I want the English version and it will be downloaded and installed for me on the spot. Once happy with the final configuration, hit enter to apply the configuration and exit the installer. If you would like to, you can now be dropped into a shell to make some final manual adjustments, but I'm happy with the current configuration, so I will select no. And the final step is to select a reboot. Make sure to remove the USB drive or detach the ISO from your virtual machine before the system starts again to prevent it from restarting the setup program. After rebooting, you will see the FreeBSD bootloader. Let it load the system, and soon you will be greeted with a login prompt. Login as root with the password you have specified during the installation. Congratulations, you are now logged into FreeBSD. Since the creation of the image that you have downloaded earlier from the FreeBSD website, some patches or updates might be available. As a root, type the commands freebsd-update-fetch to download and apply the latest patches. When it reads end, hit Q for quit. Then type freebsd-update-install to install any updates. Run the earlier freebsd-update-fetch command again to check if no further patches are needed. For daily operations, keep in mind to use the normal user you have created earlier instead of the root account. Let's install the almost mandatory NeoFetch package to enjoy our new FreeBSD installation. Type pkg install NeoFetch and confirm with yes. And start it with NeoFetch. And that's it, you have successfully installed FreeBSD. At this moment, there is no X window or desktop manager installed on the system, and you can manage your entire system from the command line. If you do like to install a desktop manager on your FreeBSD installation, for example, XFCE, KDE, GNOME, or Cinnamon, for your convenience, I will leave a couple of links in the video description to some other videos that will include the installation of the X Windows system and the desktop manager. That's it. Hope it helped. And if it did, please like the video and keep it up. Until next time. Bye. Thank you.